You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is the program called The Wonderful World of Mordini Books. And as always, it's our pleasure to have in the studio the wonderful Lou from Mordini Books in Havelock North. Hey, going, Lou? I'm well. How are you? Well, I was just saying to you, it's as cold as a mother-in-law's kiss, but you, <laughs> you said, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's nice in here, but if you've just come from the outside. Indeed. The outside. Yeah, three great books and mm. all you did that horror story um, voice and you've got yes. a horror book coming up <gasps> I've got a couple of real horror yeah. ones actually let's start with the Beast Feast Beast Feast is a lot of fun so it, it's a picture book for children it's by Emma Yarlett and it's got beastly letters to open Ooh, yes. and so the beast is a big pink toothy beast and um, there are lots of beastly recipes in the front there so you've got eyeball sushi slime soup <laughs> eggs royale which is, oh, that's got spiders and things in it and um margaret pizza mm. <coughs> made of margaret <laughs> <laughs> and shepherd pie made from a so, shepherd yes yes so this is about it's gruesome the beast he's very hungry and he's caught dinner which is that little boy that there little person oh no he's gonna put some batter on him you are dinner said beast mm. no i'm not said dinner so the boy is referred to as dinner the whole way through. So Beast didn't think he should keep such a tasty dinner all to himself, so he's going to have a dinner party and he's going to organise it and he's writing his letters. And so dinner is looking worried because he's in the cauldron <laughs> currently. The first letter is here for the Beast of the Cave. Um, oh, that's to the Beast from Sir Gut Guzzler, which is very Roald Dahl-esque, I think, bit BFG. Um, I would love to attend your darling feast, la di la di la but what does he want? He likes his food juicy and plump so and there's a recipe there for cockroach cola um dinner's got an idea because he doesn't want to be made plump and juicy mr beast this swill looks lovely but how about some delicious chocolate cake so they make chocolate cake together and they have a bit of fun mm -hmm. and then beast is inviting somebody else and he invites madame gargoyle who really wants likes her dinner salty so instead of being salted with the grinder there, Dinner says, why don't we go for a swim in the sea? That'll make me salty. And so they do. And they have a lot of fun. More fun. And then it goes on and on. This particular beast wants a slimy, muddy dinner. So oh, why don't we go out to the swamp then? And they have an ama amazing time diving into the slimy swamp. And Beast is starting to look a bit worried because Dinner, dinner and he are getting on so well, they're becoming friends. So it goes on and on like this. And there are the lovely... Um, letters that you can open or pull out things like that That's amazing. and it is really nicely done isn't it yeah and they have the best day snowboarding because that that one wanted a chilled dinner so beast is thinking what am i going to do i don't want them to eat dinner <laughs> anymore <laughs> so they come the following day the beasts arrive one by one they were very hungry indeed and we're looking forward to eating dinner beast greeted them all warmly Dinner is served, and they've made the chocolate mud pie. They've made salted popcorn, ice lollies. The, all the things are in there. Chocolate fingers, ah ha ha ha. <laughs> it was the greatest beast feast they'd ever been. And dinner had a rather good time too. Look and there. then the recipes in the back are four chocolate fingers, cupcakes, ice lollies, salted popcorn. And they all work. I like that it's got prep time, 10 minutes, cook time, the length of this book. <laughs> so you've got to go read the book again while yeah, your cakes right. are in the oven. I love the idea of that shepherd pie with a big gravy. Some <laughs> chips, <Yeah>. maybe. <laughs> How many shepherds? Onions, carrots, tomato puree, shepherd, plus flock. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> That's dear. That's a big pie. And our next book is called Small Spaces, and yes. it looks like a horror story book, Look doesn't it? Look at that it? cover. Yeah. So it's covered in, so there's a big yellow school bus and there's a field full of scarecrows. <laughs> Something very creepy about scarecrows, eh? It's by yes. Catherine Arden. And it is, I thought, about 10 plus for this one because it's got the right amount of scare and chill without the gore. Mm. So I think if you've got a kid that likes creepy books, which would have been me, definitely my daughter, and quite a few kids that come into the shop, um, this is for you. So it's about a young girl called Ollie, Olivia, but the only person ever to call her Olivia was her mother, and her mother's now died, so everyone calls her Ollie. And um, she's not recovered from the death of her mother. She's kind of withdrawn, mm. um, but finds a strange lady by the stream one day who is muttering to herself and trying to throw away a book. And Ollie is, she's not in her right mind these days, and she does odd things, and so she snatches the book from this woman and takes it home, and um, the woman's going, no, no, I've, got, I've made a deal with him, and she's got to get rid of this book. So there's something spooky about mm. the book. And then Ollie goes home, and she reads the book, and it's all about small spaces. Um, 
don't go out in the big spaces, stay to the small spaces, you know, don't go out in the night, stay yeah, in the light, yeah. all that kind of thing. You think, what is going on? And it tells the story of a woman, a local woman who had a farm and two suitors who were brothers and she marries one of the brothers and the other brother goes missing and then the one she's married goes out to look for the missing brother and makes a deal with somebody to get mm. the brother back. It's like a deal with the devil. Almost like a deal yes. with the devil at the crossroads at midnight, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and then the kids all go on a, on a school trip and something really weird happens. Is it the same farm that they've gone to mm. as is in the little book that Ollie's found? And um, the scarecrows there are a bit weird mm. and something's happening. Because they're alive. Yeah. yeah. And so, so there's, it's, it's a grand adventure. Um, and she, it's about her sort of coming back into the world and making connections with kids that she had no interest in before. before um, and then sort of battling it out. But there's real danger and real spooky chills in there. It's so good. Sounds like the sort of book that you can't wait to get to the end. You've got to keep reading it. There's actually a really good um, review in... I'm a reviewer yes. review, telling you about somebody else's review. But somebody put... Uh, oh, hang on. I'm not going to find it now, am I? Ah... <sighs> This book scared the snot out of me. <laughs> this was Jonathan Oxier, who is a New York Times best-selling author of The Night Gardener. Fast-paced and spine-tinglingly delightful. Yeah, um, so it actually starts, and it's got a beautiful um, way of writing. October in East Evansburg, and the last warm sun of the year slanted red through the sugar maples. Olivia Adler sat nearest the big window in Mr. Easton's math class, trying, cat-like, to fit her entire body into a patch of light. Oh, it doesn't. That's lovely. The autumn isn't it? sun shouldn't be wasted. Indeed. What do you give that out of ten? Oh, ten out of ten. ten I absolutely ten. love it. Awesome. But you've got to you got to be able to do the spook. Yeah, yeah, you got mm. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our last book we're going to review today is Talking to Strangers. What's that all about? This is by Malcolm Gladwell, who's mm. a, a journalist and an investigator, and he's written some really interesting books. And the subtitle of this one is What We Should Know About the People We Don't Know. So it's a non-fiction. Sort of like spooks. Kind of. Yeah. But, but how people. Like, you would expect people who are in the CIA to know who's lying, etc., etc. Mm. It's really hard to do that. So it's about all the people that, that we've missed. So how come Neville Chamberlain went over and met Hitler several times and came back to, went back to England and said, oh, he's all right. Yeah. He only wants this tiny bit of Czechoslovakia. He's, he's going to be fine. Yeah. I think he's telling the truth. You know, how did <laughs> yes, that happen? Did it took until Winston Churchill came along for someone to go, actually, no. No, he's yeah. completely bonkers. And it talks about cases like that. So there's Churchill in there. There's um, a case of a deep undercover double spy who's working for, it's not the CIA, but it's one of those American government agencies. And she was undercover for something like 30 years, actually spying for the Cubans. Mm. Nobody knew. Occasionally people would flag things and say, oh, that's not quite right. But what Malcolm Gladwell's explaining is that we default to truth, which means, nah, nah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, and everybody does that, and it takes that one person who doesn't think like everybody else to pick it. So it's non-fiction. It's non-fiction, non yeah. and it actually starts with the Sandra Bland um, case, which is um, a young African-American woman who in um, 2015 was pulled over by a copper for failing to signal when she changed lanes. Mm. So how minor is that? It escalates so badly that she's arrested, imprisoned, and actually commits suicide in, in a jail cell. For failing to indicate. For failing to indicate when she changes. It's got to have a backstory. So it's got a massive story about communication between that police officer and that woman mm. and how everything got missed and they just completely misunderstood one, each, one another. Wow. So it's absolutely fascinating. That's There's a whole raft of cases in there. Sylvia Plath, the poet, crops up as well. Mm. Some really interesting um, statistics on um, how suicide went nuts through the roof, the statistics did in the UK when we had um, coal gas, because mm. it was there in the room full of carbon monoxide. But as soon as natural gas came in, you've taken um, the time and the place away Suicides dropped. Yeah, so Fascinating stuff. An expose. Well, with three, what's, what's the um, what's the ending? I mean, how does it end? That we want more truth, or ooh, let's yeah, not but even it's look. about spotting it. I yes. think it's really, really difficult. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would have learned one or two things. I suppose it's just like what you see is not necessarily what's going on. What's happening on someone's face isn't necessarily what's happening inside them. No. Yeah. Mm, good on you, Lou. Yeah. Now, if we want any of these fabulous books that we've just uh, talked about, where do we get them? Uh, at Wardini Books. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're 16 Tomato Road in Havelock North and 44 Hastings Street in Napier. As always, my pleasure. You look out yourself. Talk to same time, same place next week. Cool. Thanks, Ken.